So I just realized that I wasn't recording any of the script. <laughs> oh no! I had to do it all again! <sighs> all of my witty, in the moment humor is lost forever. All right, let's do this again. So, first paragraph, people are gonna be mad at me. I get it, happens every time. Made fun of Voltorb, people were mad. <laughs> Made fun of Meowth, people were mad. And now it's time. It's an Apom run, let's do this. So, Apom is really not my favorite Pokemon. Look at it, strange tail, weird eyes, gritted teeth, and spiked hair. This little thing doesn't fit into the cute category of Pokemon, and it really doesn't come close when it's put next to intimidating creatures like Steelix, Scissor, or Houndoom. So where is Apom's place? Well, like me trying to get picked for lunchtime sports in high school, Apom is always picked last. It's just another forgotten Pokemon in Generation 2. Can any of you honestly say that you added it to your team when you were a kid? Some of the other forgotten Pokemon that I've been playing through with recently received great evolutions in Generation 4, like Gligar, Murkrow, and Yanma. But Apom didn't really receive a great evolution, like it got this evolution. This strange upside down triangle nose just makes it look like a skull, and Ambipom looks kind of dead inside. Of the two, I like Apom more, and today I'm going to use it to complete a playthrough of Pokemon Crystal. Maybe after all of our trials together in Johto, I'll come to love Apom just a little bit more. Before starting this challenge, I asked my patrons if I should nickname Apom, and one of them came up with the name of Glover. I think that that's a pretty fitting name. Thanks for helping me with the second hardest part of the video. The hardest part, of course, is figuring out what the Pokemon is based on. And with this one, I'm really at a loss. I have no idea. However, during our conversation on Discord, this comment came up about a pizza delivering Apom. I like this. A lot. So today, it's going to be Pizza Palm. If this runs a fast one, then the customers get their pizza on time. And if the runs a slow one, the pizza arrives cold. So let's hope that the power of normal type in Generation 2 is going to allow us to deliver our pizzas on time. By the way, I, I love pizza. Yeah, just a just a brief aside. I like I like pizza a lot. Like pizza just every day. I could yeah, uh, I've done it before. Back then I I didn't have a girlfriend, and uh, now she regulates my pizza obsession. So I don't eat pizza every day anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm healthier for it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. I need to decide what type my hidden power is going to be, and today I pick Psychic type because it's going to cover Apom's weakness in Chuck's gym as well as help it manage Morty if the ghosts are an issue. With my little Pizza Palm by my side, I set out on my Pokemon journey, and I experience Apom's back sprite for the first time. If you've seen it before, you honestly deserve some serious props. Here are the rules for this playthrough. I can only use my starter in battle. I won't use any items in battle, including held items. I won't use any glitches or exploits, and I won't use double team before I hit level 100. As we're getting started with this run, I want to mention a big error in my Yanma video from last week. If you haven't seen it yet, you can skip to this timecode to avoid spoilers. Uh, Alright, now that you've gone, uh, here we go. When I finished the video, I made the tier list and something just felt very off to me. Yanma's playthrough felt so brutal. But the time was honestly pretty good, like Gligar and Sneasel didn't feel nearly as bad. I was pretty confused, but I just decided to report the data that I'd collected. But something went wrong. So here's what it was. When I was battling Lance, the clock is at 3 hours and 19 minutes. And then when the next footage begins playing, the clock is at 2 hours and 15 minutes. So like, what? Where did 1 hour and 3 minutes go? When I'm playing these challenges, sometimes I need to take breaks to like sleep or spend time with my girlfriend. And to allow me to do this, I write down the time that was on the timer and then close out of all my software. I might actually have to use the computer for something else, like work. <laughs> so when I start everything up again, I reset the clock to the last recorded value and then continue playing. Somehow while recording the Yanma footage, my clock reset to the last value I put into the software. So I'm not entirely sure how it happened, but I missed it and then I assumed that the timer was correct after I finished the filming process. After all, it usually is. If we account for this missing time, Yanma actually got a time of 4 hours, 40 minutes, and 25 seconds, placing it in the C tier. All is right with the world now, so Steelix did actually in fact outperform the Dragonfly. At level 6 I am feeling ready for the rival. I've got Sand Attack after all. Apom can use its hand tail and its regular hands... Uh, wait, like, does it have hands? Its art and sprite makes it look like its arms are just like stumps. Is it? Is its hand its, like... Like, is its tail its only hand? That's actually, like, kind of a terrifying thought. 
So that's definitely another point against APOM in the design category. After using sand attack three times, no, not three times. It doesn't use sand attack three times. That would be fun, but that's not what happened. <laughs> After using sand attack, Apom can finish off the rival with three scratches. This move is honestly great in the early game because it gets the same type attack bonus. After the 1.5 times multiplier, it's a 60 power move, and that's really overpowered for this portion of the game. While scratch is great for the early game, Apom's stats really aren't great, but relatively speaking, it has good attack and speed, which is perfect for a normal type in a solo playthrough of this generation. Its learn set, on the other hand, makes things better. It gets the usual Johto showstoppers like Swift, Headbutt, Return, Rest, and Sleep Talk. And in addition, it gets coverage with awesome moves like Iron Tail, Shadow Ball, Mud Slap, The Elemental Punches, Fury Cutter, and Thunderbolt. Oh, I almost ran out of breath there. That's like, there's a lot of moves. It's, I didn't even mention them all. Like it gets Zap Cannon and Thunder and like other great stuff. Strength. So yeah, when Apom stats let you down, at least the learn set's there for you. Next, I take on Sprout Tower. This is an optional area, but I really like to complete it in order to obtain Flash. It's helpful for obtaining a rare candy in the Whirl Islands, navigating Rock Tunnel in Kanto, and finding Red in Mount Silver. Also, the experience makes Faulkner slightly more manageable for most Pokemon. Pidgey is the first of the majestic mud-slapping birds, but today it just wants to tackle Apom and steal the pizza it's trying to deliver. Scratch is too strong though and finishes off the small hungry bird with two hits. The pizza is safe for now. Next is Pidgeotto, and it also really wants some pizza. I've got a great idea here. Apom, it's time to throw some sand. Pidgeotto can't get the pizza if it can't see us. Yes, sand attack, a ground move, can in fact affect flying type Pokemon. This is payback for all the mud slaps your birds have dished out over all of these challenges. Faulkner, I hope that you can taste the hopelessness. Okay, I shouldn't waste any more time. Things are going to get cold. Scratch does a good amount of damage, and Apom takes down the Pidgeotto over the next two turns. The pizza is safe and warm. Faulkner gives me the TM for Mudslap because it makes sense for the flying type gym leader to give you a ground move. This is a miracle though because I need it to get past the second rival's Ghastly. It also helps with the hikers in Union Cave as well as the fire breathers there. On the bottom floor of the cave I pick up the TM for Swift. Because Apom learns this move through level up I might as well just save it and I can relearn it before Karen if she's causing issues. So now I have a confession. <laughs> at this point in the run, I'd been looking over at OBS and seeing Apom on the overlay for a while, and I'm starting to fall for this little thing. I see a bit of myself in it. It's pretty awkward, picked last as a team member, and it has a deep love for pizza. S seriously, pizza's amazing. I could eat it for every meal every day. Bugsy's my next challenge, with Scratch the Cocoon Pokemon or the opposite of hard. Scyther comes out and I switch into Fury Swipes. I'm actually going to use this move, and I'm actually going to talk about it. I never thought I'd see the day. So Scratch has 60 power after stab, but Fury Swipes has 27 power per hit after stab. So with 3 hits, it does more damage than Scratch. For that reason, I am figure that it's going to be the best move until I get Headbutt. If I just get a decent amount of luck, I'll actually be able to finish the Pokemon off faster. Against Scyther, I get that luck, and I get a 4 hit turn 1. And then it misses second turn. On the third turn, I land my next hit and I manage to knock it out. Alright, so far that's pretty good odds. The rival is next. Mudslap time. We must protect the pizza at all costs. The tricky Ghastly tries to put Apom to sleep, which is the perfect tactic to steal pizza from your friends. Uh, but it fails, and Mudslap finishes the gas ball off. Serves you right. I scratch the Zubat, and then it confuses me. Another tactic to steal the pizza. But Apom's resilient, and it still gets the hit in, and the bat faints. I should check if Apom is pronounced Apom because I've been saying Apom this entire time and like what if it's not Apom? What if it's like Ipom or something? It's pronounced Apom. False Swipe Gaming agrees. We're, we're moving on with Apom. If it's wrong, get mad at False Swipe Gaming. <laughs> Don't leave it, in, actually leave it in my comments. Leave all of your negative criticisms in my comments because I'll learn from them and also it's helpful for the YouTube algorithm so go leave a comment below. Quilava's next. I go for Mudslap because it's super effective. Apom hits itself and then I try again. Scratch or Fury Swipes would have done more damage though, so I probably should have used one of those. Quilava then it lands Ember and it burns Apom, cutting my attack stat and ruining all of the pizza. I guess the Quilava thought that if its team members couldn't steal the pizza from me, then it would just burn it and ruin it for everyone. After one more Mudslap, I start to use Fury Swipes to gamble for maximum possible damage. There's that one quote about accuracy that if it isn't 100% accurate, it's 50% accurate. And yeah, I really feel that right now. Ghastly is pretty spiteful on the next fight because it had to eat burnt pizza. I finish it off and then against Zubat, Fury Swipes misses again. 
I swear. This is so annoying. I always avoid mu moves, moves. I always avoid moves that don't have 100% accuracy for this reason. I just like ran right over that blooper and just completed the line anyways. Ah, eh, whatever. <laughs> Quilava again burns Apalm. So really we don't need to let this rodent cook any pizza. I get the luck I need then and I finish it off with Fury Swipes. While I'm heading to Goldenrod, let's just quickly talk about a pizza story that I had when I was a kid. I had a friend over at my house and everyone had been saying how somehow Delicio Pizza, when it's cooked at Scott's place, is just like much better than it is anywhere else. So I was like, well, yeah, like I'll show you my like great Delicio Pizza. And then being the forgetful person that I am, I cooked the pizza for twice the amount of time that it needed to cook. And when it came out of the oven, it was just like a charred black mess. And uh, being dumb kids, we, we ate all the pizza. <laughs> we ate it, <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> Uh, while it's been nice to use Fury Swipes, I did incur a single reset because I avoided using Swift. If I did this run again, I'd just use Swift instead and add more power, speed, and consistency to Apom's play earlier on. Headbutt's next though, so it's time for this to be our go-to move. If we really think about it though, Apom's hair could actually like be a spike in disguise. No wonder Headbutt's so powerful. Apom's actually impaling its enemies. Alright, this little guy has almost completely won me over. On my way to Goldenrod, I pick up the TM for Sweet Scent. An incredible person commented that I could use this when grinding to minimize the time between encounters. So I might end up putting that strategy to use if that's the case. Speaking of cases, I head into the underground and pick up the coin case. While I'm there, I sharpen up Apom's hair at the Haircut Brothers Salon. Hopefully I'll be back here soon for another fancy haircut. Don't worry Haircut Brothers, I'll return soon. And speaking of returning, Abra's gonna help me return to Goldenrod after talking to Denise also known as the Squirt Bottle Lady's sister, the Squister, or maybe Sinead. Sometimes I make uh, mistakes for a reason, and in this case I've omitted some letters from this name. Uh, you know, I make these mistakes because sometimes they can be like a good punchline for strange inside jokes. And speaking of punchlines, Apom learns all three of the elemental punches, because it has three hands. Well, it has like one hand and the hand is on the tail, but like the other hands are like stumps, so like, is one punch stronger? Like, it's like, which punch does the tail get? While I was battling an optional trainer in the gym for experience, I noticed my nice amount of health. So I just decided to go for Whitney anyways. But before Whitney, I lost some health on the mandatory trainer fight with the Snubble, and my only berry doesn't heal me into perfect health. So I was seriously considering just going back and healing, but I guess in the end, I'll fight her this way. Whitney opens with Clefairy, the metronome troll. Today, and most days, honestly, it's easy to knock out. Miltank comes out next, and my headbutting pizza delivering fiend makes the cow flinch. After all, Miltank, we need your cheese today. To remake the customer's pizzas after the last ones were burnt by the rival. Apom's first headbutt did so much damage, so I know that I've got this in the bag now. Uh, the cheese, that is. I mentioned before how good flying types are in Generation 2, but normal types are way better. Here's why. After defeating each gym leader, the theme of their gym gives a 12.5% boost to that type. So Apom receives a 12.5% boost to its normal moves after defeating Whitney. But Faulkner's gym also boosted our attack stat by 12.5%. So these stack. In addition, Apom gets stab and they also stack with stab. Things are stacked quite high now, like a pile of pizza boxes. Looks like we've refilled all of our customers' orders and now we can get on with this run. It's time to defeat the fake tree, but unfortunately this time I flailed to do so the first time. The kimono girls are next. They provide great experience and prepare Apom for the burned tower, which is a terrifying place to take pizza. This rival fight is usually quite scary because he has Magnemite on his team now, and Haunter also knows Curse. I lead with Mud Slap and it doesn't do much damage and then the ghost does curse Apom. I finish it off and Magnemite's next. Despite its double weakness to Mud Slap, it survives and then I take curse damage. However, it misses Sonic Boom, so I avoid the most annoying move, which could have been Super Sonic. Headbutt one-shots the Zubat. Zubat? <laughs> the Zubat, that's funny. Uh, we need just like Gary with like a Zubat head. Zubat. Headbutt one-shots the Zubat. Oh, I almost said Zubat again. With a critical hit, and that leads to his ace, the pizza burning Quilava. I use Headbutt, but the fire type survives on red health and uses Ember. Okay, no burn this time. I finish it off, gain partly nice experience, and take the victory. By the way, the legendary beasts look so cool when you release them. 
I remember I used to avoid releasing them though in gold and silver so that I could come back and look at them later on in the game. Somehow, something about them being in unpredictable locations just didn't sit very well with me and it gave me kind of a strange anxiety. The consequence is that I dramatically decreased my chances of finding them. Child Scott logic was so strange. Mudslap just isn't cutting it anymore. Mudslap just isn't cutting it anymore. Is there like a pizza slicing joke in here somewhere? I can't find it. Maybe you can find it. <laughs> For Morty, I need a better way to hit the ghosts, and Ice Punch is my go-to because there's a chance to freeze. I use it against the first Ghastly, but the ghost survives and puts a curse on Apom. The following Haunter knows Hypnosis, but it misses and faints. Gengar comes out, and Ice Punch just doesn't do enough damage. So I may have tried to freeze the ghosts, but the pizza just got cold instead. Instead of fighting Morty, there are two options available. I can go to the lighthouse and train, or I can go and get Hidden Power Psychic. I'm going to train at the lighthouse first and then re-attempt after. If he's too hard at that point, then I'll grab Hidden Power Psychic. Plus, it makes sense to visit Dennis first anyways. He's our first pizza delivery of the day. So Dennis, what's your favorite type of pizza? Put it in the comments below. Everyone else, it's your job to make sure that he knows that he's been heard. So spam the comments with his favorite type of pizza. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Coming back to Morty, I can now one-shot the Ghastly. Haunter's next, and because I'm a normal type, it needs to mimic Ice Punch to do any damage to Apom. Because I avoided Curse, I survive and finish the ghost off. Gengar's next. It's going to be a 3 hit, and it attempts Hypnosis first turn, but it fails. Second turn, it tries again, and it fails again. So I made it, but that did take a lot of luck. It really could have easily gone the other way. Now I'll take the journey through Mount Mortar to the Lake of Rage to obtain Hidden Power Psychic. I actually didn't realize how easy it is to navigate through this cave in Crystal. I just remember completely avoiding it when I was younger. It required Flash and Gold and Silver, and I never had a Pokemon on my team with that move. If the move doesn't do damage, the child version of me just thought that the move didn't do anything at all. I guess that's what you get when you can't read and you're learning to play these games. At the Lake of Rage, I stop and I apologize to the Gyarados Fisher. I called him a cheater last time, and I was wrong. I forgot that all the Magikarp here are evolving at lower levels because of Team Rocket's shenanigans. I'm sorry man, you're just a hardworking Fisher. Keep up all the work you're doing. After letting me knock out all of your Pokemon for experience points and giving me all of your Poke Dollars. Thanks very much. I catch the Red Gyarados and I name it Mason, after my very first patron. You've been around supporting me for almost 6 months now, so thanks so much. I really appreciate it. On the way back down to Mahogany Town, I fight this trainer and I get the idea of teleporting back to Ecrotique City to save a bit of walk time. I'll use the Lance Heal during the Rocket Hideout to avoid the center, and get a few extra levels in before Chuck. Once I finish off all the villains, I teleport back to Ecrotique and then make my way on foot to Olivine City and then across the sea to Chuck. In his gym, the trainers are actually a bit scary. First, there's this tag team battle with the Hitmonlee and the Hitmonchan. Hidden Power Psychic just isn't doing very much damage. That's likely because Apom's poor special attack. Maybe Hidden Power Flying would have been a better bet? With this realization, I'm a bit scared going into the fight against Nob. This fight teaches me that I should just be using Headbutt instead of Hidden Power Psychic. After all, Psychic moves don't get any badge boosts yet, and normal moves get Stab and both badge boosts. Headbutt gives a 30% chance to flinch as well. So, let's see if it's enough to manage Chuck. Primeape comes out, and it's a one-hit. His ace Polyrath is next, and it's the really terrifying part of the battle. Apom headbutts the fighting tadpole, and it does more than half damage. In retaliation, it sets up Mind Reader? Alright Chuck, so I guess this fight's just a free win. There was never anything to fear after all. Jasmine's next, and while Magnemite has a double weakness to Mud Slap, I think that Fire Punch is going to be the better option, as Magnemite has lower special defense. Fire Punch is also going to help against the Steelix, which has massive defenses. Apom puts his tail into the pizza oven, and Fire Punches both of Jasmine's Magnemites into oblivion. We're not going to have any electricity problems in this kitchen today. Steelix is next. It takes more than half damage from Fire Punch, and then strikes back with Iron Tail. But Apom survives, and then finishes the battle off. That's one of the easiest Jasmine fights yet. That's really refreshing for once. And Fire Punch is going to continue being useful because Price is next. So I guess the tail is a fire typed tail. Unfortunately, the Ice Master starts with a water type Pokemon though, so it's not useful here. After that, Dugong comes out and it's easy to take down. I do take an Aurora Beam in the process, but that's not much of an issue. After that, Piloswine comes out and I take it down with ease. Now it's time to finish off the villains in Radio Tower. I pick up the TM for return first and grab a few extra copies of the punches, just so that I have some moveset flexibility. Apom is making really good time so far. 
and I think that the pizza is gonna arrive on time to our next customer. Apom's had two haircuts, it's overleveled, and it has stab return now, and that makes the underground rival a complete cakewalk. It's time for Claire, and despite Ice Punch being super effective against her Dragonairs, I think that Return is just a better bet here. It sweeps through her first three Pokémon with ease. Kingdra's last. Return does excellent damage, and that means that Claire isn't an issue at all. With her out of the way, I'm now going to collect all the rare candies in Johto. You need all of the HMs to do this, so that's why I wait until now. There is one in Violet City across this small pond. There's another one south of Goldenrod, hidden in this tree. Next is the hidden rare candy in the Whirl Islands. It's ideal if you have Flash in here, and that's one of the reasons I pick it up. I always actually buy escape ropes when I start this process so that I can escape this cave with ease. Mount Mortar is next anyways, so I'll need another one for there. You'll need Waterfall to obtain this one. It's just to the left after you enter the room at the back of the cave. On the way to the League, I defeat most of the trainers along the way. A few extra levels won't hurt. The final rival's trivial. He doesn't even deal any damage to Apom before I finish him off. Here's my moveset and stats going into the League. I think that Apom has a really good shot at this. Up first is Will. Will Return let me win against Will? Yes, uh, Return Will let me win against Will. I'm actually strangely proud of this line. <laughs> From doing solo challenges over and over, I've learned that Fortress is Koga's most dangerous Pokemon in this format. Explosion can be extremely devastating, and this strange, like, Fortress, I'm not sure what it is. Anyways, it's so tanky and it's hard to knock out. Not today though, because Apom's tail is on fire from cooking pizza. Bruno's always simple. He's not going to be stealing our pizza today. I guess Hidden Power Psychic doesn't one-hit the Hitmontop, so that's a bit annoying. I start using Return, and that's so much better. No brain required. Oh, Cross Chop. Yeah. Okay then, so Bruno stole our pizza. And my self-esteem. I don't save between League members in Generation 2, and I quickly sweep through Will and Koga again. The mistake I was making was trying to use Hidden Power at all. If I don't use it, I can avoid damage from Hitmontop and make it back to Machamp with more health. But will this let me survive the Cross Chop? It hits me, and I survive with 8 hit points. Once again, the solution is to only use Return. Except on pizza. Never return pizza. Always eat it. Karen does have Sand Attack, and while it's annoying, she is easy to manage. It's Lance time, and we had to remake all the pizza after Bruno took it. This is the second delivery of the run. Return one hits Gyarados. Dragonite's gonna be a one hit with Ice Punch, obviously. But, uh, it survives? Okay, so Thunder Wave? All right, okay, it fails, that's really good. The second Dragonite's a one hit, so it must be a range. The level 51 is gonna survive for sure. Aerodactyl survives my Ice Punch as well, and it strikes with Rock Slide. Apom survives and then finishes it off. Let's pray Return 1 hits the Charizard. It does. The final Dragonite survives as predicted and uses Outrage, but Apom tanks it pretty well and then knocks it out, becoming the champion. I've been thinking a lot about my Kanto routing to try and make it faster. I even read a speedrunning guide, but it still isn't perfect. But I just hadn't memorized it well enough during this run. So I guess the pizza isn't being delivered to Kanto as fast as possible today. Uh, are you sick of me talking about pizza yet? <laughs> if you are, uh, you know how my girlfriend feels every night at dinner. Against Surge, I make a typical mistake from a Scott's Thoughts run, and I use Return accidentally against Magneton. It survives, obviously, and sets up double team. Okay, just please let me hit my next turn. One miss. Alright, alright, next time. Another miss. Okay, well, that's really annoying. And then Zap Cannon crits and paralyzes Apom. I miss again and finally take the pile of bolts out, but I've only got 9 hit points remaining. Electrobuzz! I wrote Electrobuzz in the script! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Electrobuzz outspeeds Apom and knocks it out with thunder. So I've got to do this one again. That's frustrating. I finish Brock off at a nice level, and after he's out of the way, Blaine's next. I didn't show the footage of Yanma's fight against him, and someone asked about it in the comments. So here's that footage to watch while Apom defeats Blaine. Janine's simple. With her out of the way, I teleport back to Viridian City, and it's time for Blue. He leads with Pidgeot. I choose Thunderbolt for super effective damage, but the Pigeon survives because it's got like a cool haircut or something. It uses Mirror Move and gets a lucky critical hit before fainting. Return manages Alakazam with ease, and then Rhydon comes out. Okay, so I've got to go for Ice Punch here. Apom uses the Pizza Freezer to freeze its tail and punches the Dinosaur for super effective damage, but it isn't quite enough. Rhydon brews a Sandstorm, which could be a cool drink at a pizza joint, but in this case it just really messes things up for Apom. It whittles me down slowly over the course of the fight against Gyarados and Executor, allowing Arcanine's extreme speed to knock Apom out. 
I think if Pidgeot doesn't get a lucky critical hit, then I'll be able to survive the extreme speed. And yeah, then again in the second fight, it gets another critical hit. It feels like this fight is just a carbon copy of the first one. Sandstorm chips away at me until Arcanine finishes me off. Third time's the charm, right? This time Pidgeot doesn't get the critical hit and I move on with better health. I also made a moveset change for this fight. I've replaced Ice Punch with Iron Tail for Rhydon, and it gets the job done in a single hit. No Sandstorm this time. That's all I needed. I've got enough health now to survive Arcanine's hit and knock it out. Apoms made it to the final challenge with a fantastic time. While I could make it through Kanto faster, I'm lucky that Arcanine's flamethrower warmed up Red's pizza. He is the final delivery. He responds by saying nothing. And that's how I responded after ordering Domino's pizza 14 days in a row. It's hard to have words when the delivery person remembers your name. At level 71, Red is impossible. So Apom isn't the Pokemon that defeats him right away. We'll keep searching. One day, I know it's gonna happen. After 10 rare candies, Apom's getting much closer. Venusaur is a 3 hit, though, and that allows it to land a solar beam before it faints. 3 health for Charizard. Return does just over half damage, but that isn't enough. At level 82, I try Dynamic Punch on my moveset. Okay, it misses first turn, and second turn, and third turn. Great. If it's not 100% accurate, it's 50% accurate. And if it's Dynamic Punch, it's 5% accurate. I really want to get a time that's under 2 hours and 30 minutes with Apom, so I'll use the rest talk strategies now. I try Dynamic Punch against Snorlax again, and it misses. Three times in a row. It's clearly 5% accurate, I'm just completely convinced. <laughs> the fourth attempt hits Snorlax and takes it out in a single critical hit. Now I can avoid damage from Venusaur. Excellent. But Charizard uses Flamethrower, and oh my. Great. I only level up once more and come back trying to squeeze in under 2 hours and 30 minutes. Please Dynamic Punch, please. But then Espeon survives my return for the first time ever, and sets up Reflect. Well, that's really bad because now the fight's gonna slow down a lot. Snorlax gets a critical hit with Body Slam and forces Apom to heal up with Rest, slowing the fight down even more. Nothing is working. Oh wait, Dynamic Punch was working! I guess it's just better when you're asleep or something because it knocks Snorlax out and then immediately hits Venusaur as well. The Grass Dinosaur Frog thing then damages itself in confusion, but Return doesn't knock it out. Sunny day. That's gonna make Charizard so much worse. I'll try to slow things down even more and heal. Maybe Venusaur won't knock itself out. But it does. So I have to face the Sunny Day Charizard. Sleep Talk selects Return and does good damage. Because I'm at full health, I survive Charizard's hit and I get a lucky Sleep Talk again and finish it off. As the 2 hour and 30 minute mark passes, my focus wasn't in the right place and I misplay, using Sleep Talk on the turn that I wake up. Blastoise uses Blizzard, and Apom survives with 9 hit points. I can't believe that. Sleep Talk uses Return once against the Blastoise, and then Rain Dance boosted Surf connects and takes Apom down to 9 hit points again. I wake up though, and this turn I finish the turtle off with Return. Apom did it. Great job little monkey. While it doesn't get a time under 2 hours and 30 minutes, it does receive the fastest time yet. I do have more experience now than I did when I was playing with Giraffe Rig or Scissor, so I think that they could achieve faster times if I played with them now. A lot of you have asked about Pokemon like Butterfree or Heracross that are stuck at the bottom of my tier list. Fear not, they'll have their day to re-attempt Johto. Subscribe and ring the chime echo so you'll be notified when my next video releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with a friend. You've listened to a lot of my thoughts, so it's my turn to listen to yours. I read all the comments, so write a message down below. I've collected the original 151 patrons, so now I'm working towards 251. When I achieve that milestone, I'm going to take some time off and celebrate by treating myself with my first tropical vacation. In Hoenn, that is. The most important thing is just that you're here watching, though. So thanks so much. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you in my next video. It's bloopers time. Well, like me trying to get picked for the lunchtime sports in high school, Apom is always picked, picked last. Ah! Can't talk about the embarrassment of high school. It gets the usual Johto showstoppers, like Swift, Headbutt, Return, Rest, and Sleep Talk. Oh, I just like hit the music stand that my gear is sitting on. Great. <laughs> Ruined that footage. Guess I don't have to burp to ruin the footage. Can ruin it in other ways. Where was I? I just like, I like staring at the script and I'm like, I don't remember recording any of this. <laughs> uh...
This is an optional area, but I, uh, that, what was that? That's a terrible way of, th th yeah, okay, I, okay. What am I saying? Falling apart. Let's get back on track, okay? This is an optional area, but I really like to complete it to obtain flash. It's helpful for obtaining a rare candy in the Whirl Islands, navigating rock tunnel in Kanto, and red in mountain water. Ah! Doppler effect. There's sound outside. I have to be quiet. Shh. I'll whisper the next line. This is Pokemon a ASMR. Pidgey is the first of the majestic mud slapping birds. My voice is like, it's like trying to come up. Maybe I should like leave a little bit of that chest voice. Yeah, that's probably better, yeah. It's the first of the majestic mud slapping birds, but today it just wants to tackle Apom and steal the pizza it's trying to deliver. I think that's blooper content. I don't think, I think this uh, paragraph needs a little bit more oomph for the actual video. Yes, sand attack, a ground move, can in fact hit flying foe. Ah! Yes, sand attack, a ground move, can in fact affect flying Pokemon. Can in fact. It's like a, my voice just disappears. It's trying to go back into the ASMR mode. It's just like, yes. Yeah, no, wait. What, what, got it. Okay, got to get back. Got to get back to the ASMR. Yes. Yes. Sand attack, a ground move, can in fact affect flying type Pokemon. And I just feel like I'm trying to seduce people with that line. It's like, is that line like seductive at all? Like, yes. But no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. With her out of the way. With her out of the way. With her out of the. Her out of the way. With her out of the way. There. With her out of the way, and Bugsy's my next challenge. With Scratch the Cocoon Pokemon are the opposite of hard. Ah, I, I want this line to be perfect. 